Today we're looking at why so many people are moving to Sarasota, Florida. After my last video about places to move to in Florida, I got a bunch of emails and DMs about not looking close enough at Sarasota. One of the DMs I got was from a girl I went to high school with and she retired early to Sarasota about seven years ago. She went over all the reasons that she and some of the people she knows that have moved to Sarasota, why they did that. I also ran a survey and a lot of the things that she said showed up on the survey. Sarasota is on the Gulf Coast side of Florida with a population of 54,842 people. They have only had one decade where they lost a little population and that was in 2010. They lost 1.5%. So today we're looking at the reasons people keep moving to Sarasota, Florida. Got it? Get it? Subscribe. Let's take a look. Number 10, high quality healthcare. Sarasota is sort of known for their healthcare. They've got a good customer base with so many retirees that moved to the Sarasota area. There are four hospitals in the Sarasota area that have all won awards for the quality of service they provide. Sarasota Memorial Hospital is one of the largest acute care facilities in the entire state and it regularly receives recognition for being one of the best hospitals and healthcare systems in the United States. The county also has the highest hospital beds per 100,000 people rate in Florida, 370 hospital beds. Sarasota is in Sarasota County and they spend double the state's average on healthcare per person. So that's good news if you blow out a flip-flop and you step on a pop top and cut your heel and you need to cruise on to the hospital and get stitches. Number nine, dining options. Yes, this seems to be a big thing with a lot of people that move to Sarasota. There are a lot of dining options here. There are more than 1,400 restaurants to, you know, pick from. You'll find everything from food trucks to fine dining in Sarasota, Florida. They also have a pretty good craft brew scene and beer gardens that you can go check out. And many of the establishments are pet friendly and offer daily live entertainment. So if you're a retiree and you got your puppy and you don't want to leave him back at the condo, you could take him to the pub with you and watch someone sing a really bad version of Margaritaville. Number eight, improving the infrastructure. So it might not be the best right now, but Florida being a popular destination in general, it gets quite congested and stressful when you gotta drive on the highways. The city of Sarasota and the county have put a lot of effort into improving the roadways. They've got several different projects they're working on to improve it. So it might not be the best right now and you might get some complaints about the traffic, but they are working to make it better. The average one-way commute in Sarasota takes about 20 minutes. That shorter than the U.S. average of 26 minutes, but they want to get it lower. About 78% of the people of Sarasota drive their own car to work. Only about 7.5 carpool and 6.6% of the workers don't commute at all because they work at home. And only 2% of the local population take any form of mass transit. So with the growth, they need to have the projects that they're working on in place. And they do. Believe it or not, that showed up quite a lot, that they've made a lot of improvements to the roads. And that kind of makes people stay there more than move there. Number seven, no state income tax. Florida doesn't charge state income tax, which is why many retirees look to a city like Sarasota when they're ready to settle down and, you know, spend their golden years. Florida gets all their money from tourists, and that's kind of who's paying your taxes. So if you move to Florida and you're irritated when you see those crowds, keep in mind they're paying you in a way, in the form of not having to pay income tax to the state. The property taxes, you know, about average for the United States, so that they're not going to kill you there. A lot of places will get rid of state income tax and replace it with like some gnarly sales tax or property tax or something like that. But yeah, Florida goes pretty light on the taxes, which is a good thing. Wallet Hub ranked all 50 states by the typical tax burden the average citizen has. Florida came in 45th, meaning they're almost the lowest tax burden state in the country. The average tax burden in Florida is about 6.6%, give or take. It changes year to year. The absolute highest is New York and they're 12.75%, Hawaii's 12.70%. And someone always has to comment and ask this one, just so you know, California is ranked ninth, uh, 9.72%. For some reason, everyone thinks California is the absolute worst when it comes to taxes. They do have some high taxes, they're just not the worst. 
Number six, home of the arts. Sarasota is big when it comes to art. I mean, not just museums. We're talking performing arts, music venues, fine art galleries, filmmaking. They got it all. So I know Florida has kind of this reputation. Everywhere outside of Miami is just guys with mullets missing a few teeth. No, Sarasota is nothing like that. Actually, most of the cities are nothing like that. All that goes on in the inner part of the state. The coastal areas are normally pretty normal. Number five, the weather. The weather in Florida is incredible. I mean, it's humid and it's hot. It's known as the sunshine state, but there's about 250 guaranteed days of sunshine every single year. The average year round temperature is 73 degrees. The temperature in winter rarely dips below 60. They have amazing beaches and plenty of sunshine for you. So just go there. Just like I've always said, whenever I talk about Florida, if you're actually, if you're any age, don't wear a banana hammock, dude. I've seen Far too much of that with gentritarians wearing banana hammocks at the beach in Florida. It's just weird. Now, there's a downside to the weather in Florida. The occasional hurricane that comes through and knocks out a city. That always sucks. It's never fun to, you know, attach plywood to your windows, pack up all your stuff, and leave the state. But it's just their natural disaster. California has earthquakes. The Northeast has blizzards. Everyone's got something. Number four, highly rated schools. Florida's not really known for having a great educational system. Sarasota didn't get that memo. Theirs is pretty good. Matter of fact, it's kind of hard to go wrong with any school in Sarasota with every school earning an A rating. Their graduation rate is 86%, which is about 2% higher than the national average. And their average test score is about 30% higher than the national average. With such great schools and great after school programs, Sarasota acts as a major college prep town. Now, if you're a retiree, this really doesn't seem like a big deal to you, but it's not just retirees moving to Sarasota. I saw one female vlogger on YouTube about a year ago and she was at Sarasota or she was in Sarasota doing something and she's like, what is going on here? This is like hot mom central. Number three, endless events. There is always something to do or see in the Sarasota area. Sarasota, believe it or not, is quite the tourist hotspot. Miami Beach, Fort Lauderdale, and Orlando is all anyone ever talks about when they're going to visit Florida. Sarasota is definitely a good time, especially if you like boating and beach going, fishing. They got all kinds of charters there. They got a fair amount of indoor attractions, but Florida is all about their outdoors. The Freedom Boat Club, the easiest way to go boating on a regular basis without owning a boat, the festivals they have every year, like the Blues Festival, the Offshore Grand Prix, the Jazz Festival, the Film Festivals, the Holiday Boat Parade with lights, the 4th of July Fireworks Show, the Firehouse Chili Cook-Off. Who doesn't love a Firehouse Chili Cook-Off? Paramedics just wandering around handing out Tums. On top of that, since 1998, Sarasota has hosted the Sarasota Film Festival. Done every year. They also have a pretty good aquarium. It's called the Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. Never been to this one. I'm usually a big fan of zoos and aquariums, but I watched some videos on YouTube about this one. It looks pretty nice, gets good ratings. But yeah, Sarasota's got something to do for everyone, including the Sarasota Film Festival. The averages. Just to compare, we'll look at the median price. The median home price in the United States for third quarter 2022 was $448,000. At that same time, the median home price in Florida was about $427,000. For the Sarasota area, which is a beach community and a nice one at that, was about $520,000. That is above the national and Florida average, but this is a beach community. Now, like I've always said, that's just the real estate jar bargain, median, and that just kind of gives them an idea. What the average Joe like myself wants to know is what is the typical home going for? They got them all over the map here. If you want to get an older home, they can be as low as $279,000. That's going to be away from the water and older home kind of small. What you want to be looking for for something decent that's, let's say, within a mile of the ocean or the bay, it's going to be closer to $600,000, and it goes up way up. Now, if you compare those prices to, let's say, where I grew up, I grew up in a beach town called Redondo Beach, California. There is almost nothing in that town that isn't a teardown that is under $750,000 right now. If you want to get within a half a mile of the beach, it's over a million. 
All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving to another state or something like that, there's a link for home and money in the comment section below. It's a website with all kinds of tools on mortgage calculators and things like that. They also have a link that will get you in touch with a real estate agent wherever you're looking to buy a home in the country. They're pretty good. They teamed up with me when I was looking for real estate agents because I get that asked all the time. I need a real estate agent for that area. Can you recommend anyone? This takes care of that for me. All right, on to number one. And number one, a laid back lifestyle. It's Florida. It's on the coast. Of course, you're going to get a laid back lifestyle. But in Sarasota, it's a little more laid back. You got a lot of retirees, like I said, and they like to take it easy. There's a lot of relaxing on the beach and doing nothing around here. Sarasota as a community actually encourages everyone to get outside and start doing things. Go hike on the Legacy Trail. Used to be a train there. Now it's a nice walking path or hiking path. They've got plenty of parks. Like I said, restaurants earlier and plenty of bars and pubs to hang out in. Sure, it's not as laid back as Key West, Florida, but it's pretty laid back. When people were asked to list why they liked living in Sarasota or why they moved to Sarasota, that is always at the top of the list. It's the lifestyle. A lot of people move here from New York and New York City to be exact. So yeah, it's a big difference. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.